President Barajagdeo says several large Chinese firms have expressed interest in investing in Guyana. Reform and relevance of Bretton Woods institutions and climate change will take center stage when finance ministers gather for the annual meetings of the World Bank and the IMF. And NCN goes shopping to ascertain the quantity of dairy products originating from China in local supermarkets. The details of these are not the stories and of course the latest sporting action in the Diamond Mineral Water and NCN Sport News and more but first these messages. Good evening, I'm Delicia Fletcher. And I'm Paul Moore. With this edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Thursday, October 9, 2008. Here's what's happening, Paul. Thanks, Delicia. President Barajagdeo says several large Chinese firms have expressed interest in investing in Guyana. The president, during a media conference yesterday, said he was able to use the World Economic Forum in China to talk with investors, singling out Bosai Minerals head, who is currently looking at the multi-million dollar aluminum plant here. Relain reports. The Guyanese leader who has been on a one-week visit to China told reporters on Wednesday that he has had discussions with several key individuals in the Chinese economic world. President Jack Dio said he met with the Chinese Premier and the Governor of the Chinese Import and Export Bank, the Exim Bank, and discussed the investment opportunities in Guyana. They both indicated that China is interested in this region. China is very appreciative of Guyana's uh, position in relation to China, it's a friendly country, and especially the Premier, he said that they would encourage more Chinese companies to come out here and to look at the investment opportunities. The governor of the Exim Bank of, of um, China has indicated that they would be prepared to fund um, viable, feasible projects that, that emerge out of these discussions. According to the president, he also met with the head of the Bosai Minerals Incorporated on further investment and expansion of their operations here, to which he says there are some positive signs. They're looking at a very large project in Guyana that is a project to build an aluminum plant which could run as much anywhere between maybe six, 600 to a million to a billion U.S. dollars. And um, I also spoke with some of the the banks that they deal with in Chongqing. According to President Jack Dio, this project, among other discussions, will be followed up feverishly by the administration. Meanwhile, the Guyanese leader said he held discussions on the Guyana Ferry project and expressed some of his concerns regarding the project. Part of the Joint Commission minutes dealt with the ferry project. We were a little bit concerned that the ferry project is delayed and they accept, agreed to accelerate that process. President Jack Dio, while in China, also inked a 40 million U.S. dollar MOU with the Exim Bank for funding of the construction of a state-of-the-art transmission network for the Guyana Power and Light Company. The line, according to the president, is to move excess power along Guyana's coastline from Skeldon to Puerto The Guyanese leader, just back from an overseas tour for two weeks, participated in a number of meetings in the United States and China. In New York, the Guyanese leader participated in the UN General Assembly, the Global Creative Leadership Summit, and the Climate Change Talks with Al Gore. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. The Inter International Monetary Fund has activated an emergency finance mechanism to help countries hit by the financial crisis. IMF Chief Dominic Strauss-Kahn said the lending procedure would allow the IMF to react quickly to support countries facing funding problems. The scheme, which was used during the Asian financial crisis in 1997, will help speed up approval of loans and a mission has been dispatched to Iceland where the government has taken control of the three biggest banks. Strauss-Kahn urged countries to act quickly, forcefully and cooperatively to solve the global economic problems. But he issued a stark warning against countries acting unilaterally to fight the crisis, referring to recent isolated moves by certain European Union member countries. Finance ministers from the G7 group of wealthy nations are also meeting in Washington this weekend as stock markets around the world continue to crumble. Reform of Bretton Woods institutions and climate change will take center stage when development and finance ministers gather for the annual meetings of the World Bank and IMF this week shortly. Guyana is likely to be represented by Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh at the October 13 meetings and will be among those lobbying for reform of the two institutions. Here are details. 
As the world is currently facing a devastating financial crisis, development and finance ministers will gather in Washington to examine the effects of the current crisis, particularly on developing countries. The meeting is also expected to examine the measures used by the bank to cushion the current rises in food and fuel prices. But apart from this, finance ministers, including Guyana's Dr. Ashni Singh, are expected to be lobbying for the reform of institutions such as the World Bank and IMF. The call for the reform of the Britain Woods institutions came from Commonwealth heads of government during a meeting last year. I think we have agreed that we need a major reform of the international institutions. How could it happen? that suddenly $500 billion has evaporated and, 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 the, and the world now is in such a big crisis. The IMF, the World Bank, the United Nations and other institutions that were built in the 1940s for the problems of the 1940s and beyond are not adequate for purpose, not fit for purpose for the challenges we face in 2008 and beyond. It's not just about reforming international institutions. It's also about getting member states to listen to these institutions. President Barrett Jagdew had been among the most vicious in the call, adding that the relevance of the institutions must be taken into consideration. The officials, including President Barrett Jagdew, have since been using all fronts to make their voices heard. World Bank President Robert Zillick in a statement said developing countries are already suffering from food and fuel prices. Inflation may now also see declines in exports, trade and investment as a result of financial turmoil that is becoming increasingly global. The president is hoping that this can be the main focus of the institution's officials when they meet, but the official agenda of the meeting revealed that reform of the institutions will take a center stage. The officials also are expected to examine the role in governance of the IMF and integrating climate change considerations at the multilateral development banks. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. The Chinese contractors responsible for the Skeldon Sugar Factory has assured President Barry Jagdio and the administration that difficulties there will be overcome by month end. The president made this remark at a press conference yesterday where several issues were addressed, including that of the productivity of the sugar sector. Here's more. He gave me assurances that the, this would be fixed because they have a turnkey contract. So regardless of what happens, they have to deliver a functional factory to us. And a factory, they have, we have a one-year guarantee on that factory. So it's not our concern and it's not going to add cost to us if they can fix it. They have to they have to fix it before they're paid. His Excellency President Bar Jagdio. President Jagdio noted that even though this is an issue, his concern, however, is over the loss of opportunities and relying on the private sector. We had relied on private suppliers of cane. Now we may have to step in. I've, we have even helped the private people to pl plant some of the cane by, by assisting them with the machinery and land prep but unfortunately didn't reach that quantity to feed into the factory. I think when we ran the, the model, we were hoping to get at least a third of our um, supplies from these, the private farmers. But we probably have to get it done ourselves because we can't keep the factory working below capacity. The president met with the Chinese contractors during his visit to China, where he participated in several events, including the Global Economic Forum. The Skellon Sugar Factory was scheduled to be commissioned this month, but due to the unexpected problems, this could not have been possible. However, this resulted in spoilage of sugar cane and a loss in productivity and income. Reporting for the NCN 6 o'clock news, Akila Jacobs.